Hello and welcome to Man Woman Movie Episode 2. I'm Jason Halls. And I'm Erin Halls. This is a podcast where we take turns picking movies. And no matter what that movie is, we both watch it and review it. Ooh. Yeah, I'm still reeling from the first episode. <laughs> but why? It was such a great movie. From Justin to Kelly really got yeah, to me. No. That that really It wasn't. That was rough. But, you know, I was more excited about that one only because I knew what that movie was and I knew how bad it was. But this time around, it's your turn to pick the movie. So I, I'm i the one that's in for a surprise this yes. time. Yes. Oh, and you are in for a surprise. Um, I, I, I'm going to sort of follow suit with what you did on the first choice. Um, you had never seen from Justin to Kelly. Right. I've never seen this. Okay. But um, it's something that I've, I remember seeing in the video stores ever since I was a little kid. Okay, so you saw this when you were a little kid. So this is from the 80s, I'm yep. assuming? Yep, 86. And, and it's, is it a sci-fi movie, an action movie? It is action. Do I know the actors that are in it? Have I heard of the actors? Absolutely. Are you ready for it? Is this a bad movie? Like supposed to be a bad movie? I don't know. I don't think so. You think it like it was rated highly? No, I know it wasn't rated oh, too it, highly. Oh, okay. All right. Oh god. We are about to watch Sylvester Stallone in Cobra. Cobra. Ew, he looks like such a douche on the front. <laughs> what is that? Don't you mean awesome? He's got a match stick in his mouth. Is that what that is? That's a match. Crime it is a disease. Meet the cure. Cobra. Let me look at this cover. Okay, okay. He's got a grenade in his pants. He's got... Which is the best place to keep a grenade. Of course, on the outside of his pants. He's got a, a, a gun with a picture of a cobra. Of course. Of course, because he is cobra. I think... I, I don't know what that is. It might be another gun. It might be another grenade. Along with whatever kind of gun that is in his hand. Oh my god, the stupid matchstick hanging out <laughs> of his mouth. And then he's got aviators on with his his V-neck black shirt. Let he me, just looks like a douche. <laughs> Let me read the description. This is from the back of the case. Like Sylvester Stallone's Rocky and Rambo, the hero of Cobra is another original, Lieutenant Marion Cabretti, a one-man assault force whose laser mount submachine gun and pearl-handled Colt 45 spit pure crime-stopping venom. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's the from the director of Rambo First Blood Part Two, George P. Cosmatos. So this was after Rambo, after Rocky. Uh, yeah, Stallone is pitted, ag- uh, Cabretti, I should say, Cobra, is pitted against a merciless serial killer. The trail leads to not one murderer, but to an army of psychos bent on slashing their way to a new order and killing the inadvertent witness, Brigitte Nielsen. Fortunately, Cobra is her protector, and full-throttle screen Mm. excitement doesn't get any better. Wow. You know what, though? Because Brigitte, is that how you say it? Brigitte Nielsen? Mm -hmm. Now, we've seen her more recently when she was with Flavor Flav. I mean, that was good handful of years ago but she looks like a hot mess right now but back in the day she was dish well i guess maybe she'll be a dish in this i mean this was a long time ago yeah i'm I'm curious to see her in her dish days yeah are you excited i need to refill my roman coke <sighs> okay we're gonna go watch cobra see you soon court is civilized isn't it pig but i'm not This is where the law stops, and I start. I gotta say, I I was pretty pleasantly surprised by Cobra. I didn't hate it. Yeah, I honestly expected it to be a lot worse than it was. Yeah, I mean, there were definitely some parts to make fun of, but all in all, it wasn't... It it wasn't terrible. Okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, I noticed it, in the beginning of it, in the credits, it's a canon film. And I just actually recently watched a documentary about all of the canon movies that came out in the 80s. And it, it was really interesting just how fast they would just crank movies out. Canon would produce, I, I don't know, like 40 or 50 movies a year when everybody, every other studio was making like six or seven they just 
just pumped movies out. So I, I wonder about this one and how it was treated. I, I mean, since Stallone was in it, I, it was probably, I would imagine, yeah. one of their... They put more effort into it. Yeah, yeah. It was a big, it was a bigger one, I'm sure. I did notice that Stallone wrote the screenplay, which kind of explains all his little tough guy awesome Oh my God. Moments. <laughs> his one-liners. Did you like the one-liners? There were several of his one-liners that I really appreciated. The way beginning when they were in the uh, grocery store mm -hmm. and the guy was like, don't come any closer. I'll blow this place up. And... Cobra says, that's okay. I don't shop here. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't shop here. Yes, there were some great one-liners. This like, is where the law stops and I start. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's a great one. So in the beginning, there's the grocery store scene. Right. Where it's the psycho killer is in there and he's just like holding people hostage. And he shoots a guy. Mm-hmm. And up comes Cobra. They're like, I believe the, the line was... Calling Cobra. Calling Cobra. So they call in Cobra, and he rolls in in this... Uh, I don't know what that was. That well, it wasn't a 50... Oh, it was a 1950 Mercury. That's what it was. With the license plate Awesome 50? Yeah. So it was a, a 1950 Mercury. He rolls up there, and my thought was like, how do you get to be the cop that gets to drive <laughs> his own car to work? Did he just show up one day? He's like, I did something good on a case. He shows up one day driving this car, and they're like... <laughs> I guess he can not drive a squad car anymore. It's just, we just aren't going to say anything to him. He's just that cool. And what I want to know is, what was Cobra doing right before he received that phone call? That, <laughs> that they needed help at the grocery store. Because he just comes in, just full, like, badass mode, badass outfit. You know, his aviators on. Like, what... What was he doing five minutes earlier? Not only did he have the aviators, he had the match in his mouth. Oh, right. That was like yeah. his trademark. He walks around not with a toothpick, but a match. Because <laughs> he's ready to light it up at any moment. He confronts the bad guy by just coming out of the freezer. And he's right in front of the killer. He's right in front of the bad guy. And, you know, I, I, I work in retail. I work in, in a store. And I know that there's only one way in and out of a freezer. There's no way he got into the freezer without the bad guy seeing him. <laughs> but well, he... That was the most dramatic <laughs> grocery store I've ever seen. There was dry ice everywhere. The fish sticks just had a dry ice just rolling <laughs> off of them. I mean, it looked cool, but I mean, I, it was it was pretty funny. Now the the grocery store scene. And maybe I just don't remember. I wasn't paying attention. What what was he after? Was he just well, just a psycho? Or, or that actually speaks to um, a deeper problem. I think that that the movie has. My biggest problem with the movie is that there's zero depth really given to what the villains are doing. Yeah, he is in. He's with the villains. Like he's one of their cult or whatever. Because he says something about like. The new world or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like, you're not going to stop us and all that. And he's like, I'm a soldier. But you... Yeah, I'm a hero. Yeah, and then yeah. you never go into what they're about. And I think if they had infused the villains with a belief system mm -hmm. or like some kind of mythology that they're operating under, the movie would have been a lot better because you could have understood what they right. were trying to do. And you thought that maybe they were going to go into that because they had that one... Uh, news reporter talking about it and it says you know that the the victims are anybody they're they're old they're young they're like they, they, kind of, they just say it's anybody so you kind of think okay then they're going to go more into why they're choosing these victims but yeah it never does well in even after so right after the grocery store scene there's kind of a montage or you know several scenes where you do see the cult um, with the uh, Brian Thompson playing the leader, who I, I'm a Brian Thompson fan. He has the record, I believe, for most sword fights on screen. So yeah. he's he's a tough looking guy. Yeah, he has a very <laughs> long and defined jawline. He does. So there's uh, there's a lot of quick scenes where they're going around just capturing and killing anybody they can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. So he mentions a f just a few lines of dialogue in the oh, end, like the weak. Yeah, they well, have to yeah. eliminate the weak. Yeah, I mean, it was it was not a really great explanation or a very deep explanation of how 
the they work. It, it was about as basic as you could get. So I think, in my opinion, one of the things you they could have done to make it as good as possible would have been to give the bad guys a little bit more depth. Yes. They had plenty of screen time. They yeah. were on screen a lot. Yeah. The, the major plot of the movie was... Brigitte Nielsen, what was her name, Ingrid? Yeah. She was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. She drove past at night, um, you know, and and didn't witness. She witnessed the, the aftermath of, um, of a murder, right? She yeah. kind of drove past while the killers were still there, and she saw one of the killers' faces. She drove away really fast. She was scared. They got her license plate. That's the whole basis of the movie. The Night Slasher. That's what Brian Thompson's name is. Right. He doesn't even have a name. Like, that became the sole mission of all of the entire cult, is to kill Brigitte Nielsen, (laughs) because she saw what they did. Cobra meets Brigitte Nielsen Mm -hmm. um, at the hospital, because um, the the cult tries to attack her after one of her modeling gigs. Which was a weird modeling gig. Yeah, it was like her posing with a lot of weird looking robots. And a lot of different wigs and yeah, it was it was a very odd scene. Yeah. So at the hospital, they meet, they talk about what she saw. She stays in the hospital overnight with police protection. But somehow mysteriously the police mm-hmm. get pulled off the job. They're told to go back to the police headquarters. Cobra's at home on his own computer looking up through all the criminal records of the database that he has access to. Mm-hmm. And then the Night Slasher comes after her in the hospital. Yes. And, and and very conveniently, he's coming after her in the hospital where there is one night staff person. And once she's killed, because she's killed, yeah. there's like nobody else to help her in the hallway. It's just a dark hallway and there's nobody there to help her. Yeah, he's like jamming a knife through the door, the Shining style. And eventually, of course, Cobra gets there and saves her. And he puts together pretty quickly that the cult has somebody on the inside in the police force. And isn't that when they... Oh, and they're... Yeah, no, they're going to go to uh, a safe house. Yeah, but doesn't... Okay, so when they're leaving the hospital, though, isn't that when the cult plans an attack on them? And there's that woman cop who's involved with the cult. She's the one assigned to help get her to the safe house. Right, so she sticks very close the entire time. The, The cult has... Uh, really, they seem like they put together plans very quickly because, like, they're leaving and the cult just attacks them in multiple vehicles. And there's this big car chase, oh, yeah. car combat scene. And it was actually kind of, it was shot really well. It was kind of cool. And uh, they're, I they're, I mean, they're destroying everything around as they're driving through the city. And, like, mm-hmm. there's a truck behind Cobra's Mercury. There's a car in front of them with the Night Slasher firing a shotgun. They're flying through the streets. Flying through parking garages, off of different, like, second level parking garages into the street. Yeah. One of my favorite moments of the entire movie is when Cobra whips a <laughs> U turn and just, like, fires his gun at the car, the truck that's behind them, and it just blows up. Evidently, I mean, this is one of those movies where, like, you can shoot a semi with a pistol or a shotgun, and the entire thing will explode in flames. <laughs> so they're just all up in Cobra's business <laughs> and Brigitte Nielsen's business. The cops, of course, are all over Cobra because yes. of his tactics. But he, he, Yeah, he's not really doing anything wrong. No, like he's supposed to be the renegade cop that destroys everything and he's too dangerous. He goes by his own rules. Yeah. They have to set the whole, he's a rebel cop. Yeah, and... he's a rebel cop. And so they, they decide to, what do they do after that? Well, for the safe house bit, how does that get introduced? They, well, I think that's when, is that is that when they get to the hotel? The showdown, one of the main showdowns happens. They're just en route going upstate California. So their plan is to keep going north and the cult just catches up. Because of the woman cop. Because of the woman cop. She's just phoning it in. And I think right. Cobra sees it, right? Oh, that's right. Because she's on a pay phone. So yeah, the cult just shows up at the at, along their route going north and there's this big battle scene at the hotel right his partner is now did you watch seinfeld a whole lot you didn't watch not seinfeld. a whole lot do you okay the, it, it was poppy even though you don't you're not gonna know poppy poppy was the restaurant owner the older guy that peed on uh jerry's couch and oh. left the big pee stain <laughs> and it grossed him out and george ended up buying the couch anyway he's poppy 
Okay. That's, that's who I figured out that was. And he was a good friend of Cobra. He's the one who tells Brigitte Nielsen that Cobra's real name is Marion Cabretti. Oh, and tells her right. to call him that. The interesting thing about that name is that a lot of the heroes in 80s action movies were named John. John oh. Rambo, John Matrix, John McClane. Um, but in this movie, Ooh. Cobra's real name is Marion, which is the real first name of John Wayne. Really? Yes. John Wayne's real name is Marion. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, little little trivia there. That's interesting. That w- our research department turned up a gem <laughs> with that one. We have a really good research department. We do. <laughs> we we should pay them more. <laughs> so, anyway, they're battling. Or, and I think most of the action is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty 80s. It's not too violent. Although, an X-rated version does exist of this movie. There was a, an early print that had like 30 to 40 more minutes of footage. And it it was a lot more violent. And so I think to get an R rating, they pulled a lot of that out. Oh. And so like a lot of the deaths, I noticed this when I was watching the movie, a lot of the deaths happened kind of off screen. I mean, I, I noticed that, but I didn't know it was because they were trying to, to water it down. I, I, evidently they were. So yeah, I mean, there was uh, there there is an X rated version out there. Something tells me it has nothing to do with Cobra and Ingrid in any of their scenes. Uh, yeah, because they had one kiss. Yeah, I think in the whole movie. The whole thing. Yeah, at the, when they were waiting uh, at the hotel. Right. It was, yeah. a, it was a very tame love story. Mm-hmm. Not a whole lot going on there. Now, as we know, their real life love story mm-hmm. was a little bit more intense. Yes, they were married for two years. And in fact, they were together while filming this. I thought maybe they met on the set of this movie. I thought so, maybe too. But they didn't because they were in Rocky oh, together. Okay. And there's a 17-year difference. And, and, uh, and apparently Sylvester Stallone left his wife um, of 10 years, 12 years, something like that, for Brigitte Nielsen. Wow. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. What a dog. Yeah. So I think they... <laughs> men. <laughs> so I think they met on Rocky, and he got her the role of Ingrid for this. So is it fair to say that Brigitte Nielsen tamed the cobra? <laughs> I'm shaking my head. <laughs> um, okay, so to, to wrap up the synopsis, they fight at the hotel, mm-hmm. they fight on the road again. Again, I think most of the action scenes were actually pretty good. I, I was I was pretty pleased with them. Um, I mean, you got to accept some of the craziness of like just a gun that can blow up a truck or something. But, you know, if you if you can accept that and enjoy it, you'll like it. And then they end up in a big factory, which was very Terminator 2. Right. Like, um, you were like, what? what is this factory? What do they do here? Because yeah. it was just... There's just flames <laughs> and hooks flying around. <laughs> so the Night Slasher finally confronts Cobra face to face. He just keeps saying, well, like, I'm a soldier of a new era and I'm the strong and we eliminate the weak. They never really go into the cult's recruiting policy because they seem to have a lot That's of That's right. What was the whole... They're, they're holding the the axes in their hands and, and their weapons and their... They're clanking. They're, yeah. And they show that several times. And I feel like they were showing new people every time yeah, they it, did that. It was almost like a ritual. Yeah. No, it was. And they would show some people that were just kind of... You know, badass looking guys, and then they would show guys in suits. Yeah, that was, were doing it. It was like the 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 evil version of Fight Club. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> like just people from all walks of life are you know following the Night Slasher, but yeah, they don't really explain yeah. who, who follows this group or how they get members or what their members what they believe. Right. So again, that was kind of weird, and it was just pretty basic. And and also, what I was wondering too is the female cop. That was part of the cult. And the Night Slasher, were they an item? You know, there was a, a small scene where she was begging him to... She wanted to kill Brigitte Nielsen. She's right. like, I'll just take care of this right now. Yeah. The person who saw us murder these people, I'll just take care of it. And he's like, no, she's mine. 
Yeah. But and she was like stroking his arm and and I thought maybe they were gonna establish that they were a couple or something, but it really never went beyond that. Yeah. So again, I thought the villains had a decent amount of screen time for for such a sure. short movie, but it was just all killing. Like they just every scene they were in, like somebody's dying. So our research department uh, says the body count for the film is fifty two, mm-hmm. but forty one of them are killed by Cabretti. So <laughs> what? That many people died. Yeah, I guess. And so, at least that, according to our research department, <laughs> they watch the movie several times and they, they count. Of course, because they're amazing so, employees. Yeah. Right. So the but the, so the night slasher, pretty much every time he's on screen, somebody's dying. But they don't ever spend the time to say why that he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. And they got Brian Thompson. I mean, yeah. he's a scary looking dude. He, he is. I thought he would, you know, for what he's given, you know, he did good, but he just wasn't given a whole lot. What did Rotten Tomatoes give this? Well, Rotten Tomatoes, okay, I don't agree with this at all. Rotten Tomatoes, the, the critics gave it 13%. 13? Yeah. Average rating, 2.7 out of 10. No way. I've seen way worse movies than this. I, I actually mostly enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I didn't think it was bad at all. I mean, yeah, we picked out some cheesy parts. Go ahead. I don't shot her. I even think it deserved more than that. Well, and I don't like action movies. What do you think it, it deserves? If I were a critic, I would give it... I mean, I wouldn't give it a great score. Mm-hmm. I would give it maybe somewhere in the 50s. Okay. You know, I would even go... I'd go high 60s for me. Okay. I mean, again, for the most part, it's it's cheesy fun. Okay. There's some cool stuff that happens. Yes. You know, there's some well, you know, put together action scenes. I, I, you know, it's a, it's a short movie. It's not long, so it doesn't put you through the ringer for runtime. I thought it was fun. Hey, dirtbag. You're a lousy shot. I don't like lousy shots. You wasted a kid for nothing. No, I think it's time to waste you. It, it, the movie is not, you know, immune to criticism for sure. Like, one thing is Brigitte Nielsen basically does nothing. She's oh yeah, she's worthless. Yeah, she's just there to be protected and sort of a trophy. Like, and just watch. Yeah, I, I thought she was gonna have her moment to like attack the lady cop. You were hoping for that, and and it didn't happen. No, it should have happened. It should have happened, but. You know, so, you know, I, I, I certainly understand criticism, but it's a product of a different era. And, you know, if, if I personally could enjoy that for what it was. Sure. So in the end, Cobra and the Night Slasher battle and in this weird big factory that looks like it belonged in Terminator 2. It may have been the same set for all I know. Yeah. I don't know. And eventually the, <laughs> the Night Slasher has a terrible death. He mm. gets, like, hung on a hook. And we knew that was going to happen. Because oh, yeah. the hook kept going back and forth. Yeah, the hook was flying all over the place. And then he gets impaled on the hook. And then the hook goes into this big, weird, burning <laughs> maw of steel. Walls that mm-hmm. are on fire. And he just gets sent into there and yes. burned. And then it cuts to the scene where, all oh, the cops are all here. So you know everything's okay. Um, yes. All the flashing lights. And then... Um, they're going to give Cobra a ride back to town. And he's like, no thanks. Got my own transportation. Right. Where he gets the, the leggy blonde to get on the back of his bike. And they ride off into the sunset. It was, it was beautiful. Yep. Roll credits. <laughs> the end of Cobra. So um, a couple random observations. There's a weird subplot of food. Like, yeah. They keep talking about food yes. through the whole movie. I tell you, hungry. What do you got? I got something that looks like cheese. No, no, no. There's some cake over there. No, take the, take the cheese. What? I want the cheese. And, and they really want you to drink Pepsi. Oh, yes. A lot of product placement with Pepsi. Yes. There was a big sign even outside Cobra's apartment, like a yeah. big shining sign. <laughs> right. That would probably destroy the value of his apartment. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there was certainly a lot of talk about food. Like Brigitte Nielsen, mm. just she likes a lot of ketchup. On her fries. And yeah. it was funny because Cobra just makes this weird face when he sees <laughs> like, how much ketchup she's putting on it. She puts a concerning amount of ketchup on her french fries. He even makes a joke about it. Mm-hmm. He just says, do you have a life preserver? Because your fries are drowning. 
<laughs> and he keeps trying to get his partner to eat, you know, raw food or like just fruit. And, yeah, yeah. And like that kind of thing. So and Cobra's, prunes. Cobra's concerned about health. And I know his partner at the end survives an attack on him and he asks Cobra for some gummy bears. Yeah. It, the the whole food thing goes through the whole movie. Mm-hmm. I like also there there was a little subplot with the gangsters outside Cobra's apartment. Do you remember? That? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Do you remember with what the parking happened? space? Yeah, yeah. When he they he pulls up and and he's yelling at them to pull forward, and they they curse him out, and so he just kind of shrugs his shoulders and 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 he hits the gas bumps the bumper and just pushes the car forward to give himself enough space to park. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously they get out and they're like going to confront him about it. And what does Cobra do? Just grabs the front of the guy's tank top his and just wife rip beater. Yep. his wife beater, just rips it off. <laughs> Next time Cobra comes back for that parking space, they move for it. Yes. Yes. So I think there's, there's a definitely business. like an aura about Cobra that says... Don't mess with him. If you try, like, he's not going to shoot you immediately. But most people who, I think, step against Cobra learn after one incident that you better respect Cobra. Well, you know what it is. What is it? It's the wearing the sunglasses, the aviators inside. I I think Ah, that's what it is. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I, I... I think that's what what gives him this persona is when he's fighting the bad guys inside, he still needs to wear his aviators. Our research department said Mm -hmm. that there were plans to do a sequel that never, never really got together. Okay. Um, You are in charge of the sequel. Okay. Cobra 2. Okay. What happens? Oh, what happens in Cobra 2? You know what? I think that's when... Brigitte Nielsen or Ingrid, Mm -hmm. I think that's when she becomes, you know, more of a fighter. I think that's when when Cobra and Ingrid become a a team and a force to be reckoned with. And they together fight the bad guys. I like it. Cobra 2. Cobra 2. Could be really good. I'm in. Yeah. Count me in. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. I would never see it. (laughs) Unless it was on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I made you. Uh, so overall, though, you would say this was not as bad of an experience as you thought it was going to be? I would not watch it for a second time. Okay. Um, was it as bad as I thought it was going to be? No. Okay. Um, it was definitely better and more entertaining than I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, you know, this is just not my type of movie. I'm just... I'm just not into the movies with the um, explosions and the car chases and, you know, the, the, the cheesy one-liners and the, you know. But with that aside, this still wasn't that bad. Okay. Okay. Would you still love me if I decided I wanted to start doing that matchstick thing? What? What, holding a, a match in your mouth? Yeah, like if I walked around with a match in my mouth. Would I still love you? Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. Would this be tolerated, though? Do I have any say in whether or not you do this? Well, yeah, I'm asking. If I had a say in it, I, I would definitely try to encourage you not to do that because that's... Too awesome? <laughs> yes, Jay. It's just too awesome. That's what the problem is. Uh, <laughs> now, of course, your pick is up next. Uh, Do you have any thoughts of, of what you might pick? No. No? I don't. So the future is wide open the, for us. Yes. As yes. wide open as it is for Cobra and Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's how I like to view it, too. Um, but, no, it's... I, I, I know that each time... We're going to try to step it up a little bit, and mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I think I'm going to try to step it up. Now, what, by step it up, do you mean get really bad, like progressively worse and torturous, like worse than from Justin to Kelly? There's only one way to find out. Oh, you, I guess everyone should probably tune in next time. Got to wait for the next podcast. Yeah, so for now, we are going to ride off into the sunset, much like Cobra and Ingrid. <laughs> I'm Jason Hulls. 
And I'm Erin Holes. And we will see you next time on Man Woman Movie. Au revoir, Pee Wee. You're a disease, and I'm the cure. I got something that looks like cheese.